It's a big world out there with plenty of things to do and places to explore. But it's a world with a lot of big problems to solve, like pollution and global warming. It's time we all work together to solve them. So where do we start? Well, the first step is learning all that we can about the problems facing the Earth. And then figuring out ways to solve them. We call that exploring. <laughs> and right now we're going to explore geothermal, geothermal energy. energy. What is geothermal energy? Simply put, it's energy derived from reducing the heat found in the core of the Earth. Humans have been using energy for at least 10,000 years. The Romans, Chinese, and Native Americans all built their villages near hot mineral springs for warmth, where the underground water was thought to have healing powers. But it's only been recently that we've harnessed the Earth's warmth to generate electricity. We haven't used geothermal energy in the past because for more than a century now, it's simply been easier to burn fossil fuels, either oil, coal, or natural gas to make electricity. I mean, there were plenty of these natural resources under the ground and they were easy to get. But fossil fuels are a non-renewable resource, which means they're nearly impossible to replace when they are used up and they generate pollution when they are burned. As the world's population grows, the demand for electricity grows as well. At the same time, a reliable supply of fossil fuel has become more difficult and expensive to find, and the atmosphere has become more polluted. And since fossil fuels are used in almost everything we do, from growing food to going to school, you'll notice the cost of just about everything keeps going up as well. Today, there's a need for a more eco-friendly, affordable, and renewable source of energy. That's called green power. And one source of green power is geothermal energy. It was an Italian prince named Piero Gennori Conti, who in 1904 built the world's first geothermal power station. By tapping a dry steam field in the Tuscany region of Italy and using a small 10 kilowatt generator, Prince Conti was the first person to successfully transfer geothermal energy to electricity. Since that time, geothermal plants have been built all over the world, especially where the Earth's heat is close to the Earth's surface. How does a geothermal power plant work? Well, basically, uh, geothermal power plants take the heat from the Earth and bring it to the surface to create steam and turn a turbine. Uh, it's the same process you use in a coal plant or a nuclear plant. Um, instead of burning something, though, to create that heat, we just use hot water from the Earth. As the Romans, Chinese, and Native Americans all knew, there are some places where geothermal energy easily rises to the surface of the Earth, in natural streams of hot steam, known as geysers, or in pools of hot water, known as hot springs. But in most places, that energy is trapped far underground in hard-to-get-to reservoirs. This geothermal energy has proved to be a clean, renewable energy source that has been flowing continuously for centuries. The challenge is finding it and bringing it to the surface. These geothermal reservoirs are formed when rainwater migrates below the groundwater table through fissures in the earth and forms in pools. There, it is heated by the hot rock surrounding it. We want heat and water that's close to the surface. Uh, where that magma gets close, it can superheat water. That's, uh, you know, it's your basic uh, water trapped in the Earth's crust. It comes from rainwater, it gets heated, and we use that. We send out geologists who uh, do a lot of uh, seismic monitoring and magnetic imaging and things. They pick a plot that they think is going to be good. We drill a couple slim holes, they call them, or kind of exploratory wells. If we're confident, we drill a big, expensive production well. We bring up the hot water. Um, and then we put a plant on top. Most power plants, whether fueled by coal, gas, nuclear power, or geothermal energy, all do the same thing. They convert heat to electricity. And they all use many of the same components, turbines, generators, and transformers. The difference between a geothermal plant and the others is, while you have to bring the fuel to conventional power plants, geothermal plants are built where the fuel is. There are three main types of geothermal power plants. Dry steam plants, flash steam plants, and binary or two cycle plants. 
While they all do the same thing, each operates in a slightly different way. In dry steam geothermal plants, steam shoots up the well and is passed through a rock catcher to filter out impurities, then put directly into a turbine. The force of the steam is used to spin turbine blades, which in turn spin a generator that produces electricity. The used steam is then cooled and injected back into the ground. Dry steam plants are rare because not all geothermal wells produce steam. Flash steam power plants are more common. Instead of injecting the steam directly from the well into the turbine, these plants collect the hot water in a flash tank first, remove the water, then inject the remaining steam into the turbine. Binary or two-cycle geothermal plants are more technically advanced because they can make electricity from much cooler water than the others. They do it by first sending hot water from the geothermal well into a heat exchanger. On one side of the heat exchanger, the hot water called brine. On the other, a special working fluid known as binary liquid, usually made up of isopentane. The well water and binary liquid never mix inside the heat exchanger, but the heat energy contained in the brine is transferred to the isopentane. A nice analogy I like to use is an old water radiator in your bedroom. If you put a glass of water on top of that, the glass of water is eventually going to get warm, even though the water in the radiator never touched the water in the glass. That's like our heat exchanger. So the hot water we bring is up is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The isopentane vaporizes at a little less than that, at about 280 degrees Fahrenheit. And so um, once the liquid turns to a vapor, it builds pressure. We have a, tur a little turbine wheel, and if you have a lot of pressure on one side and no pressure on the other side, the pressure is going to try to release across the wheel. As it does that, it makes the wheel spin. Once that turbine's spinning, we have a spinning shaft and we can create electricity by running a magnet past wires and we send that electricity to the grid. All electric generating plants operate the same way, no matter what type of power spins the turbine blades. Magnets, plus copper wire, plus motion, equals electric current. Once the well water leaves the heat exchanger, it's run past huge cooling fans before being injected back into the earth to be heated again. We haven't really affected the water in any way, so we can just re-inject it 100% back in the ground. Hot water comes up and heats that working fluid, goes back down in the earth, gets reheated, comes back up, and has an endless cycle. The difference in a geothermal plant is no fuel is burned to make electricity, and no water is wasted. So we have closed loops, which is very economical and very efficient for us because we have zero emissions and zero water consumption. And in the western United States, where these power plants are prevalent, water is not. And so it's very good if you can have an energy source that doesn't consume a lot of water. Geothermal energy can be cheaper to produce than conventional power because there's no fuel to buy and transport to the plant. The plant is built right over the fuel source, and the hot water is free. There are drawbacks to geothermal. You can't build a plant just anywhere. You have to have a ready source of geothermal energy nearby. You have a high upfront cost to do the drilling, produce the wells, get the fluid, and build the power plant. And so the upfront cost can be a little staggering, but what that does is give you a lifetime supply of free fuel. And so when you look at the long-term benefits, we think that geothermal power is much more competitive and cheaper than any fossil fuel in the long run. Because as you see today, natural gas prices and oil prices seem to not just be variable today, they just seem to be going up. And what we know is that the energy we're getting from the Earth at this location is gonna be at a fixed cost. And so that makes us even more marketable to utilities because we offer them a fixed price. We say, we're gonna deliver you this power for 20 years at a fixed price. And if you can find a coal plant or a natural gas plant to do that, I'll eat my hat. We could develop a lot more geothermal around the U.S. if we had uh, a better understanding of the subsurface research. And for students, this is, I think, maybe an emerging field for them to look at. When we drill a well to find that hot water, we're not very good at it today. And the reason everybody doesn't have geothermal power plants is it's very expensive to drill very deep wells. And if, uh, with new technology, if we could reduce the risk of drilling, we might be a lot more prolific 
in building power plants throughout the U.S. So, the next time you turn on a light switch or look at your family's electric bill, think about where that electricity comes from and if you're using our natural resources wisely to help make the Earth a better place in which to live. You know, there's still a lot more to learn about the world and what makes it go round. And it's never too late to go exploring. You may just be surprised at how much you can learn. Until next time, I'm Christian. And I'm Katrina. See ya. Out there exploring. See ya.